Welcome to this week's Adventures on a Sportsman's Life. I'm here with Jeff Rice, Luke Clayton. We're here in the fall, guys. I mean, this is our time of the year, right? Deer Doesn't hunting is here. Deer hunting is here. One of the yeah. things we've got coming up here in just a little bit is is I took my daughter, my older daughter, Teresa, and she hates the fact that I call her the older daughter, but <laughs> uh, she and I went out to our little place and we really showed kind of how to set up for rattling. Now, rattling works almost anywhere where you have white-tailed deer and when you kick in the fact that you're using Texas Race hunting products to make that area smell like our deer there, it'll hold them as well too. So we've got that coming up in just a few moments and then there's no telling where else we'll go before the show's over with. We, we're jumping around like a jackrabbit <laughs> these days, but we uh, it'll be it'll be fun. We'll have a lot of fun, folks, and I hope you stay with us because uh, every week we're out in the woods or on the water. There's a creek right over here about 30 yards and in the winter it gets chock full of white bass. So oh, yeah. Yeah, more of that to come. Yep, lots more fun and exciting things coming here folks on the Sports of Life, so stay tuned. One of the things I really enjoy is hunting around old homesteads. Old homesteads, a lot of times people had a smokehouse. In that smokehouse, they cured their meats with salt, primarily pepper, and to some extent, some other chemicals occasionally. And a lot of times, if you can find those places like that, it's a favorite place of white-tailed deer because of the fact that it also serves as a good mineral lick. Got my daughter this morning, Teresa, who is going to show us a little bit about horn rattling. And one of the things that we do whenever I go out horn rattling, one of the things I learned a long time ago is that bucks have a tendency to approach downwind. One of the things that I always use is a hunter's creed or a dominant buck type lure from hunting. Texas Hunter Ranch product or doe and estrus kind of scent and I put it up downwind because those old mature bucks have a tendency to come in downwind regardless. Now uh, Teresa will have already sprayed down with uh, scent guard and uh, obviously it looks like some of the bees like our, uh, our lure as well too but what she's going to do is put it out and we're going to show what we do and we set up. We've got the wind blowing directly from where we started, where she left her gun, to right here. Now any buck that comes in, he's gonna come in downwind. That's just the natural way that whitetail bucks approach a horn rattling. They'll make circle, so we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but we're gonna put out the Texas Race hunting product lure right here so that when the buck comes into the sound of the rattling antlers, he's also gonna be smelling something that, that's gonna keep his interest for a little bit. Got an ideal place here to set up in that uh, we've got a good natural back drop. But the one thing you want to do is you, this will help you. If you notice, I'll show you here in just a little bit. She is sitting with her back against the, the tree. Now, one of the things that you want to do is, as I told you, that bucks have a tendency to, to come in downwind. They'll circle downwind until they get directly downwind of the sound. So one of the things you want to do is always make certain that you've got a shooting alley, a shooting lane to the left, dead center, downwind, and then also over to the right. Because those bucks, regardless which way they're going to come, they're going to try to go downwind, particularly those older mature bucks. And that's what we're looking for right now. We've got the scent out, we've got the rattling horns, we've got the wind in her back, and got shooting lanes to the left and to the right. In this instance, Teresa is using a 375 Ruger with a Hornady ammo and a Trigicon AccuPoint. Now, if you'll notice, she's got her scope cranked down to the bare minimum, essentially. So it's down to two and a half to three. Now, with that, that's gonna give you the opportunity to have a lot greater field of view. We're hunting fairly close in. The bucks respond, they're gonna probably be within 25 to 30 yards. She can get on them very quickly with that Trigicon scope, with that little tritium point that's in the center of where the, the, uh, 
the reticle intersects is going to help her get on target real quickly as well too but when you're rattling turn your scope down as far as you can get it you can always crank it up when you start moving elsewhere Make sure you got shooting lanes to your left and to your right directly downwind. We've got the uh, Texas Race hunting products out. She's covered up with Scent Guardian, so she really didn't have to pay attention to the wind, but it's just a natural thing of the deer to come downwind. So one of the reasons you spray down really well to begin with was Scent Guardian. But then also the reason we're putting out the, uh, the uh, buckler that we've got down downwind of us. I want those bucks when they come in not only to hear the sound but I want them to be able to smell something that keeps their attention for just a little bit and maybe they'll stay around a little bit longer so I can evaluate them that much better. Folks, as an old outdoors rider, I have used lots of products. Smoke in Tex electric smokers, the best smokers that you can find. This is Diz and this is Scott, my buddies. Diz, tell them how they can learn more about Smoke in Tex. Yeah, obviously the number one source of information is going to be our website. It's got hundreds of recipes, it's got helpful guides, it's got all of our models and our accessories listed there. Uh, of course, we, we have a phone number, 888-922-1511, and you can, we'll actually answer our own phones. That's true. And this, the main thing, the easy way, uh, smokingtext.com, you can learn all about it. Correct. And of course, we're on all the social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, etc. So take a look at us whenever you can and uh, whatever social media you'd like, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Well, folks, welcome to our show. I want you to meet Mr. Coy Hearth. Yes, sir. Lappy's hog trapping, right? Yes, sir. We're going to talk about a way to catch these wild hogs and put them to good use, feed the people that really need the meat for free is what you're doing. Yes, sir. And we're going to give, give, uh, give Coy's model. People could do this wherever. We've got a trailer. We're going to show you these hogs here in just a minute. One big old blonde boy right there. I think he just said hello to somebody yeah. did. Coy, you've been doing this a while now, but you actually what you do is trap hogs, nuisance hogs, uh, take the meat to Kubi's Game Processing, which is in Dallas, one of the best meat processors they, there are. The hogs are getting a little rambunctious over here, folks, so we're going to show you the hogs here in a minute. The model that you've got, it's a non-profit, right? Correct. Tell us how that works. You set up a nonprofit, and then you have to have money to buy corn and to buy traps and, and all that, but you, you can generate dollars through the, the people that, that pay you to remove hogs, right? Correct, correct. I got started the nonprofit uh, to get more food to or meat to families in need, and then also I started the, the business where I got the insurance to trap the corporations where I can actually charge and it covers the processing, the bait, all the all the stuff that goes into it. It's a good it's a good setup. Well let's take a look at these hogs. Everybody's watching us and they're saying, well he's catching these hogs. But I do want to make sure that people can contact you. And folks, Facebook, uh, tell them how to like you on Facebook. Now you get to they'll get to see what you're doing, where you're trapping and see the hogs you catch. Yeah, you can follow us on uh, Slappy's Hog Trapping. Uh, see what we're doing. You can also uh, reach out to Cubies and donate to them to cover the cost of the processing. That's right, Cubies Game Processing, folks, in Dallas. Old Dave there's the manager. Good guy. Oh, yeah. well, let's take a look at the hogs, what do you say? Yes, sir. Well, Coy, we promised to show everybody that big old blonde boar. Good gosh, that's a big hog. Oh, yes. 
But he's also going to make some nice pork chops, isn't he? Yes, he is. Now this was this was a night's nice catch that you had on these hogs, and we haven't ran half the traps out here yet. We, what do you say I get with you and we load up and see if we can get some more of these? I think you had a, a buddy with another uh, another trailer yes, to sir. load some on. Yes, sir. But these are the hogs that are being put to use, folks, right here, and I'm impressed with with what Coy's doing. I'll tell you what. Well, folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton, and we're getting set up to fry some fish. You know, there's a lot to learn about charcoal, a lot of things that I didn't know. B&B &B charcoal has been in Texas. It's made in Texas, and it started, I think they kicked their company off in the early 1960s. But we're going to cook us some, fry some fish, and I thought walking you through the whole process would be, would help you. The main thing I want you to know about is the charcoal briquettes. Uh, I've learned this, Some, all charcoals are not made the same. This uh, has a cornstarch as a binder, that's it. There's no additives other than that. And these things, there's less ash. You'd have to experiment yourself if you've cooked a lot with charcoal. This is the best, I mean there's less ash uh, when this burns than any other that I've ever tried. So we've got some charcoal, I want to cook, to cook, to cook fish in a Dutch kettle or skillet I like a little blaze so we've got there the B&B &B pecan barbecue and cooking wood the reason I guess we could cook it just with uh, you know we could fry our fish just with the charcoal but I know when we lay this wood on there we can get a good flame licking up to the bottom of that skillet so let's fire this off and let our charcoal get get burned down you know pretty good there and then We'll come back and we'll put put the wood on and get some, I want some flame coming up and the way to do that after this charcoal gets fired up is to put the wood on. So we'll be back and, uh, and fry some fish, what do you say? Folks, we have our fire going, have a charcoal down there, and then the, the pecan cooking wood. And we're gonna, we're gonna put some charcoal, let that charcoal do its trick, and we're gonna put some fillets in here in the old cast iron skillet. I don't think anything cooks any better than cast iron. It just holds the heat. And that is doing a good job. You know what? I see Mr. La Mr. Whitetail, Mr. Larry Wysu coming up. You know what? I've been down there <laughs> just pond fishing and showing my prowess of how not to catch fish. And I could, that time you dropped that first fillet in that hot skillet right there, <laughs> there the wind was blowing just the right way for me and the wrong way for you. Did you? I'm coming to eat some of your fish. Well, we have a whole bag. I, this catfish is fresh. Uh, Jeff, oh, well, of course, we're at our buddy Jeff, Jeff's place, Bucking Bass Ranch, here on Lake Fork. Caught these fish last week with, with Seth. Oh, yeah, Seth absolutely. We, we, we caught uh, two limits in about two hours. They were they were about water about 18 foot deep. But they, they fishing could not have been better. I don't know, there's something about cooking on an on a open fire like that. I can't say enough about it. I've already bragged on the being B and B charcoal, but that that wood, if, if the wood that, that we're using, well, you can see some it of the caught in a hurry, right? Yeah, yes, it did. And people say, why do you want to do that? Well, it's convenient for one thing, but they kettle dried yeah. to 190 degrees of that wood, and I can tell a huge difference. It's not popping and snapping, you know. Plus, it's convenient. It's right here. Oh, oh man, it's right here with us. Where would you get that? I mean, I need uh, yeah, Bucky's. Bucky's has a good selection. I know a lot of places have it, 
But Bucky's has a awesome selection. Really, of, I'll have to pay attention. Yeah, you look. You know, you'll see the wood stacked up in front of Bucky's. Yeah. But you have to go inside Bucky's to get, to get the, the charcoal. Yeah, this this charcoal, I I mean, Mr. Ed Riley with with B and B, he gave me a tutorial on how to right how charcoal is made and all. I learned a lot about it. I learned enough to know that you want a a dense charcoal with not with not any additives. I mean. The cornstarch is the only binder. Look at these fillets. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. It's not going to take long with this kind of fire. You know? I think I showed up, <laughs> I think I showed up at the right time. You did. Well, we've got plenty <laughs> plenty of fish. Thank goodness. I'm hungry. I tell you, we're going to let that that little piece right there. Oh, man. Look at that. Larry, you're, see, you're, I, earning, I, I, your, you're I, earning your keep. I, well, I feel like I need to. <laughs> I wasn't there to help you catch fish, and I didn't catch anything a while ago, so. I tell you. And that's unusual for that pond. Oh, yeah, I know. In the creek back there, we'll be catching those white bass in Jeff's Creek. I'm looking, that, that's a wintertime deal. Yeah, it'll be like February, in mid-February. Right. To me, that fish is, uh, you know, I hate to brag, but uh, it's pretty easy. Stuff. I think it's about where it needs to be. It looks so very cool. It look, look good. <laughs> it looks Okay, let me put some more in there. Looks absolutely delicious. This is going to be hot. Can I lay it up on there? You can lay it right there. And All right, right, we're going to put some more and turn these into some crunchy fillets. I may never cook fish any other way than this, you know? I don't know why you'd want to. Why would you want to go back to modern way with, you know, propane? Oh, that's modern way. I thought this was the modern way. <laughs> well, they've For changed. Me it is. <laughs> they've changed, son. <laughs> okay, this is the way we cooked the fish when I was a kid, though. I promise oh, you that. Me too. We Although never, we didn't have the B and B charcoal, but we didn't have B and B charcoal. But I mean, we cooked all of our fish outside. Thank you, sir. In a cast iron skillet. The only difference was we probably used hog lard. Yeah. And you know, the more I, for, I was up in Saskatchewan with. Uh, cooking and they use lard up there. Oh, yeah, and you know, I've done some you're a biologist Larry, but I've done some reading that That lard may not be that bad. No. It may be better for you than some of these Polyunsaturates or whatever. Well, you know, I look at it this way. My dad passed away when he was 91 his brothers passed away when they were right at 100 and you know what they pretty much ate lard for the time they were Conceived. Yeah. It's what they had. It's what they had. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too sure that you know, they lived a good life. Didn't have a whole lot of health problems until they yeah. got past that 92, 91, 92 year age. Right. Well, Mr. Jeff is is, our, is running the camera over there, and I can tell he's eyeing this fish up pretty good. So we may want to. I looked over there a while ago, and I up at the camera. And I thought it was raining. I guess I was just is drooling by God. <laughs> <laughs> well. But I think we've accomplished what we wanted to here, folks. I, I, I did want you to know about the B&B the B &B charcoal and, and the cook wood and maybe doing things a little different. You may not cook your fish like quite like we're doing it here, but, but you ought to be. By golly, you ought to. <laughs> you ought to be. So we'll get these in here, and then we'll have us a, a lunch, and then we'll fry some more, and we'll put those in the refrigerator for breakfast in the morning. I like how you think. All right. Cold fish is good. Ooh, what's the dead boss? I mean, you didn't have to get away from her. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Are they worth don't the darn? Don't look! Don't look! No! Don't, don't look! Don't look! I'm gonna kill that little bitty. Fish. Oh my! That's as good as. Oh my! <laughs> okay. You put a good scald on it. I want to tell you, my goodness. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. What I'm that talking about is really good. It's what fantastic. I'm talking about. I think it's all about this outdoor. This outdoor program. No question. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, that I is. think you might need a longer set of forceps there. Here. I hear you, bud. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Now what you gonna do? I ain't going to take it. If I had a, uh, if I had a uh, rag, I'd pull it over. Uh -oh. But uh, there's no, 
I don't have any knob, no, Larry. You don't, don't have any knob. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say we uh, wrap it up, boys, and, and eat. What do you think, Larry? <laughs> He's way ahead of you, I'm, buddy. I'm told me not to speak with my mouth full, but I'm going to. I think we go eat. Let's go eat. Well, guys, this has been a fun show. Old Coy Hearth, uh, Slappy's hog trapping. That boy's doing a lot to feed people. That's really amazing. Did. Yeah, that's really and taking amazing. hogs off the off the range. You know, mm -hmm. good at and, every respect. I yes. Mean. So, Coy, hats off to you, buddy. Keep it up. Uh, good job. And then. Uh, Fish fry cooked out on uh, the, using that B and B charcoal oh, and yeah. those those log that wood. Uh, people might think, well, what do you want to use the wood for? Well, it was right there in the sack. It was right there handy. I liked it, and it puts flavor to things. Let me tell you, folks. Thank you once again for joining us on this week's show. We uh, look forward to seeing you right back here next week for another adventure on a sportsman's life. And a special thanks to these fine sponsors, Air Force Air Guns. B&B Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Nielsen Specialty Ammo, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snap Block Hunting Blinds, Texas Raised Hunting Products, and Striper Express.